Welcome, everybody. Uh, we've got another amazing guest on today. This is a Talk Data to Me series. Um, Dunn and Bradstreet's with us today. We've got Jay Daly, Partnership Strategy and Data Integration. Uh, Jay's been with DNB since 1980 and has been in a variety of positions. And um, we were really excited to have you today, Jay. Thank you. Excited to be here. So Jay, I you know I want to know a little bit about DNB's backstory and and really how they ended up providing sales and marketing departments so much value. Well, they, again, the history of DNB right goes back to 1841, so uh, a little bit before I started with the company, um, and the, you know the roots pretty much everybody knows is, is in the credit and risk space of the of the side of the house. Um, about, and I think it was actually with the, uh, one of the companies that Dun & Bradstreet owned over the time was Donley Publishing. Um, and Donley Publishing, which was primarily Yellow Pages, um, ended up moving more and more into the marketing data arena, right? Um, so when we divested uh, Donley Publishing uh, years and years ago, um, the data side of the business for marketing purposes, and it was started out as just lists, lists and labels, right? Um, and that was probably close to 40 years ago, right? That, that business kind of started, took off, um, and we've been, uh, growing it significantly, uh, and adding more and more value to it, um, over the years. That's pretty amazing. Can you tell me a little bit about the different types of customers you guys are servicing? Uh, and you know what, um, the, the tagline that, that's, on a lot of the DMB stuff is 90% of the Fortune 500. Um, you know, enterprise type customers have always been um, a very, very strong presence, right, in the DMB customer base. Um, but our goal, right, is to deliver insights and data and value to every uh, business out there, right? So from the small mom and pop shops, uh, you know, using uh, some type of freemium Hoover offering or base Hoover type of uh, offer um, all the way up to the enterprise type of customers. Uh, but we're committed to helping businesses uh, grow their businesses uh, with more uh, data and insights. And so I'm guessing you have, you know, a pretty large sales team. And so I'm going to ask a question about your ideal customer profile. Um, and I'm sure you have many of them because you've got, you know, your SMB team, your mid-market team, your overseas team. You guys got a, a very um, nice sales structure. But what if, if you could find any you know, out of the of all of them to be that ideal customer profile? Um, you know what? It, it's it's anybody that is doing business with another business um, that that's in effect who our our target audience is. Um, and so, so we, you know, you'd love to be able to, to narrow it down to one specific thing, uh, but it really isn't. It's it's all the way across the board. Yeah, I really like that. Um, most people aren't so focused on, on on specifically, you know, what they're actually doing and selling, and and that's a really good answer. Anyone who sells to businesses, a business selling to another business. Um, what are the most common critical business issues? that you guys help sales and marketing address? The, well, again, there's, there's a whole cycle, right, from a business perspective, right? And um, DB is committed to providing data and uh, solutions, right, for each uh, phase of the process, right? So starting out with, you know, the analytics and understanding your ideal customer profile, right? Um, who am I going to target? Who am I going to go after? Then it's uh, finding who are the target companies that I should be going after. Um, I know who I know. I don't know who I don't know. Um, building on that, it's now how do I engage them? Um, so the digital solutions, the intent data, things of that nature, right, are, are critical in putting together campaigns. Um, similarly with like account-based marketing strategies, right, um, providing solutions in that space to make sure that the uh, number one, the accounts you're targeting are correct, but then also the, the messages that you're delivering are personalized, right, to that particular type of audience. Um, from an engagement sta uh, standpoint, uh, again, uh, dmb has got a, a market-leading CDP with uh, Lattice, uh, our Lattice solution, and that was an acquisition 
a couple years back. Um, and then, you know, it, it goes to once I've got that out there right now, I need to track uh, the type of person who's hitting my website. Um, and it's one of the things that we're working heavily with you guys on, right, is identifying a business or an individual that, that hits a website. How do I quickly classify them uh, or identify them as a business? Uh, which business are they? Um, and then, you know, routing that lead most effectively right to the, uh, to the sales rep that can have the best chance of closing that deal. Um, you know, moving on from there, there's uh, the whole sales acceleration component, which is um, primarily our, our Hoover's offering, uh, which basically provides the reps with uh, the critical business information, industry information that they need to help move that sale forward, right? And close it as quickly as possible. So there's, uh, there's also a number of things we can do along the nurturing line, right? That, that helps reps uh, get their deals closed fastest. Um, and then, you know, you, you're back into the cycle of, you know, now that I've got them in the, in the, in, in house, how do I retain them right over time? Right. And make sure that the pipeline stays strong. And so DMB provides, uh, content and solutions, right. All the way through that entire life cycle. That's amazing. Um, you broke it down perfectly. You mentioned um, you guys have an API called Website Visitor Intelligence, and then you have one called Type Ahead. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how your Website Visitor Intelligence API is unique? Uh, it's unique based on, again, it's identifying the business, right, that you're dealing with. And um, making sure that you get the right person or right company identified so that you can attach the right content to it. Um, and then the other aspect, right, that we're able to provide uh, is, again, is this a, uh, a location within an organization and that organization actually uh, is related to another organization that I'm already dealing with. Um, so it ties kind of into that uh, relationship aspect, uh, uh, hierarchy, family trees, things of that nature that can um, really make a, a big difference, right, in terms of get, uh, getting the right um, person attached to the right person inside your organization. Yeah, I think it's a very impressive feature. And, um, you know, for any B2B marketer, re removing a, a number of field values from your forms uh, while not sacrificing quality of information, but actually my, maximizing it is, is an incredible feature to have. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the specific geographic locations uh, that you guys saw, serve? It, again, uh, DB's database, um, unparalleled, right, in terms of scope. Um, we just hit, I think, the 400 million uh, record mark uh, not too long ago. Um, so kind of a big milestone. Um, and our, our entire focus is uh, to make, make sure that we cover the vast majority of the world GDP. Um, so our data acquisition strategy is focused on that. We, uh, again, some areas are a little more challenging than others, right? But in general, that's our goal. Um, and uh, I don't think there's anybody out there right now that's doing it better or more comprehensively than DNB is doing it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have to say that most of the enterprise companies that we come in contact have a license of Dun & Bradstreet for that specific purpose is a, a firmograph and many other, I'm sure, but the firmographic footprint uh, into the global regions that aren't as easy uh, to fill in. Um, I think you've already answered this question, but I'm not so sure. I'm sure there's okay. a component to the business. So what do you categorize the data set you guys provide? Is it a B2B exclusive data set or are there B2C components as well? Uh, generally B2B, right? That's, that's where we focus our business. Um, as a part of a global company, right? There are some of our um, countries, right, that, that do offer some B2C type solutions. Um, but from a D&B perspective, right, our goal is uh, specifically business content. Um, now, again, there's, there's also a lot of 
uh, personal content that sits right within a business, right? Because your contact level data, right, is an individual. So it's not B2C, right? But the consumer on the end is becoming more, from a business perspective, is becoming more and more, you know, like a consumer, right? So from that aspect, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of bridging a little bit there, but um, our, our focus is solely on, again, helping businesses deal with other businesses. That sounds great. Do you guys consider yourselves enrichment providers, list providers, or both? <laughs> um, yes. So it's it's both and, right? Um, so I, I, one of the things, again, the core from Dun & Bradstreet's perspective is we are a content provider. That's the bottom line to what we deliver. Um, however, solutions, right, is really what we want, what we aim to provide to customers, right? So the solution could be just raw data, if that's what they need. The solution could be uh, derived data, right? So we've got a uh, heavy analytics uh, team, right? That's building out uh, models constantly, right? To solve problems that customers don't even know they have yet, right? Um, uh, and so, um, it's the analytics and then it's uh, the delivery vehicle. Uh, again, you know, we talked a little bit about the APIs. Uh, APIs are one thing that's a critical way of getting content to customers, uh, but so are platforms, right? And uh, so DMB is focused on the solutions as a whole, right, for, B2, for B2B users. Yeah, it's a, it's a very large breadth of solutions that you guys offer. Um, you know, you mentioned 400 million contact or, or records. Mm -hmm. um, m my question is, can you break down the universe between person records and business records and how many of each in the database? So, so again, the, the tracking for companies has, you know, we've been doing that forever. Um, from a contact perspective, uh, again, our goal, um, and, and this has been probably within the last 10, 10, 12 years, right, is to take our contact data, right, and move it to the next level. Um, so we have put a lot of focus and a lot of effort, right, into um, number one, improving the quality of the contact, the coverage of the contact data. Um, and for right now, uh, again, our, our primary focus, uh, the starting point, right, has been U.S. Um, we've grown the U.S. contact base considerably, right, in the past, uh, actually just in the past couple of years. Um, and then, uh, we're also, again, working with our partners, right, in other markets um, to, to get contact information for uh, countries like UK, Ireland, uh, China is another big one we're working on. Um, but each one has its own privacy uh, issues. And so we are making sure um, that we are uh, staying cutting edge in terms of the privacy aspects of it. Um, and making sure that, that our customers can trust the data that they get. So amongst those, um, that content, do you have an, an idea around the number of total attributes around a person or business in the database? <laughs> uh, well, this, and this kind of gets back to um, one of the, one of the, key differentiators, right, between DNB and, and other firms, right, because our database is not solely use case specific focused on marketing. Um, so you, you could say there's, you know, 300 plus attributes that are used in sales and marketing on a regular basis. The number of attributes in the database is, is uh, it's over 2,500. Um, just, again, because a lot of these attributes are um, things that are used on the credit and risk side of the house. Um, a lot of the attributes are derived. Um, so again, we're doing a lot of modeling based on the raw data. Um, so, you know, determining what, how likely is a customer to buy, uh, our whole intent data um, uh, initiative, right, is, is deriving um, huge numbers of attributes, right, uh, um, ongoing. Um, so the the I guess the answer to the question is it's I would say 2,500 plus and growing daily. That's a massive set of attributes, and that's you know I, I I typically go through a process with either prospects or customers or partners where um, you know they want to buy data or they want to 
fix their data or clean their data. And at some point that involves an executive sponsor trying to, you know, pry for how are, how are we going to make a return on that, right? And so, um, you know, the the first exercise I take them through is, okay, well, what are your core business objectives? And then we they write down for sales, it's these two things and marketing and finance. And, and then we look at it and we say, okay, well, what data are you going to need to solve for those individual objectives? And, right. and we start going through an exercise and there's our field values, our attributes. But what we find often in this consultative process is that the person on the other side of the line doesn't know what data is about is available. Like when you mentioned 300 attributes, that's a lot. When you mentioned 2,500 um, to somebody who's not a data worker, they may know, not know where to start to look through those. So do you have a good way or an easy way to identify if, if I can tell you what business uh, issues I'm trying to solve and a little bit about myself, um, how do we look through the attribute catalog to see if, there are unique data sets available that we have no idea even exist. Right. And, and realistically, that's, that's the goal of the DMV sales team, right? I mean, they are the de facto experts on the data set and the use cases, right? And the needs, right, around, uh, and, and specifically what we're talking about here, right, is the sales and marketing side of the house. Um, they also, though, are working constantly with their counterparts in other parts of the business, right? Where, um, again, if they hit something where they're not sure they're looking for another piece of data, um, there's resources to basically help them uh, identify what's, you know, what are the other things that might be good. And that's where, that's where our analytics team comes in, right? These guys have um, years and years of experience and, and in working with not only um, the trying to, to derive data attributes, right, as a result of a need, but also just understanding what data is there, right? I mean, they're, they're the ones that are constantly mining through it, identifying, you know what, let's, this data attribute, let's try it in this model and see if it actually has an impact. Um, and that's, that's the team that, that just has an irreplaceable level of knowledge, right? Um, as far as our data goes, right? So it's starting with the reps who are very well informed of, of the basics, um, what is the most commons, and then they've got a team that, that they can lean on, right, to go deeper. It's amazing. Um, so we do hear a lot about DNB hierarchies from our customers and prospects. And um, just wanted to have you kind of explain to the, the, the audience here about Dun & Bradstreet's hierarchy offering and how it may be unique uh, uh, from what the, what else is out there on the market? Well, and, and again, from a hierarchy perspective, DNB's hierarchies, the, the ones most people hear about, right, are, are what we call our legal hierarchy. Um, so companies that are more than 50% owned by another company. Um, and this started again back in, you look at our history in risk, right? It's like, um, if I'm selling to somebody and they are owned by somebody else, right, that's another potential pocket that I can go after, right, if these guys tend to default on their uh, commitments. Um, so, uh, again, it has been the focus of, of D&B uh, for at least the last, uh, I'd say, 50 to 60 years, right, to maintain these legal uh, hierarchies and linkages on a global basis. Um, no small feat, right? Um, but on top of that, right, there are other uh, hierarchies, right, that companies might be interested from a sales and marketing perspective. A uh, good example of that might be uh, franchises, right? So I want to approach McDonald's as McDonald's, whether it's a company-owned store or a franchise-owned store. Um, minority ownership. So I want to be aware of not only companies that are in their uh, as majority stakeholders, but also related from a minority perspective. And when you talk about sales and marketing, right, it's, it's all about relationships, right? And how can, I, how can I expand, right? If I've got one relationship, how do I expand that into four? Um, and so again, d &B's hierarchies are heavily used in the sales and marketing space specifically to help reps understand how to expand from where they're at today. Yeah, that's a great explanation, and and it makes sense if the database is bigger globally, 
you'd have a, a larger file of, uh, of hierarchies as well. So um, seems like a pretty big competitive advantage there and, and, and the other ways you spoke. But um, on the DUNS number, um, this is something that for some people in marketing, they know all about it and others, like they don't know what it is. And so I want you to kind of, I don't want to say dumb it down for us, but just, <laughs> you know, let us kind of give us a breakdown on what the DUNS number is and, and what the different subcategories are and what they mean. So uh, the data universal numbering system, DUNS, <laughs> uh, has been around, uh, I, I believe since the 70s is when we first started it. Um, and the core reason for it, right, was to identify unique business locations. Um, so that's how Dun & Bradstreet uh, establishes and tracks its database, right, is at a business location level, um, which then ties nicely into the hierarchies, right, because a business location may be a branch location, and then there's where's the headquarters, um, and then you have a headquarters, but is that also, does it have a parent? And if you have a parent, then from a sales perspective, I might want to know, okay, well, I want to group, right, all of my accounts, uh, and this could be, uh, you get into account-based marketing, right? I want to put all of the companies that are under the same um, top parent within this country, right, together. That's, uh, I think you, you mentioned subclassifications, be called like a domestic ultimate DUNS number. And then if I want to group everybody together, right, then that's the global ultimate DUNS number, which would allow you to kind of roll everything within your organization up to that one top parent. It's pretty amazing. We See, I work with DUNS uh, numbers all the time in categories when we match and merge and link data, right, because when the data is there and you know, you know, what's related to what, that's, you know, what Ringley does, we take that information, we link, we merge, we, we parent. And, and so we rely heavily on that information to help our customers to basically organize the data in Salesforce in that type of structure. Right, um, right. Do you guys help your customers with uh, any ideal account profiling? Um, yeah. So again, uh, w one of the things uh, that we, we offer, right, is uh, a number of solutions, right, that will allow a customer to take the, their customer list, right, and all of the DMB firmographic type of data, um, slice, dice, right, to your heart's content. Um, again, you can get our analytics team involved to actually do it for you um, to be able to come up with what is the ideal customer profile. And that can be at a product level. Uh, it can be at a, just a revenue level. So, you know, depending on how a customer, uh, one of our customers wants to understand their customers, um, you know, that's the first thing, right? Is, is what are you trying to accomplish? Um, but yes, we've got a number of segmentation tools. And then the, the great thing is, you know, you go through the segmentation process and then on the back end, you can say, okay, and what's my current penetration? right? Because the, the entire universe of businesses is sitting behind it. Um, so if you do a great customer segmentation and you get this great, you know, I've got, th this is the perfect profile and you lay it over the universe and you've got 95% of them, right? It's like, okay, well, I, I guess I got to do something else, right? <laughs> Versus I've got 1%, right? Which is kind of a, a better story, right? Um, so the, the, universe uh, aspect of it and being able to benchmark, right, is, is one of the critical things uh, that adds to the profiling. Yeah, I typically leave that part of the story out in my presentations and keynotes on ideal customer profile is what percentage of that market do you actually have? And that's very important. That's a great point um, because, hey, you may be killing it, but you might have 95% of the total adjustable market and it's not a very great plan for getting on new customers. Right. So tell me, do you guys have any freemiums or trials or, you know, ways for customers who or prospects who are really interested to try before they buy or learn more? Oh, absolutely. And, and again, the best, the best thing to do is, is, um, again, contact DMB, uh, get your rep on the phone, um, depending on the solution that they're looking for. Um, there are a number of trial offers, right. That, that DMB's got available. Um, 
So uh, definitely uh, the try before you buy is, is one of the things that we, we believe in. Yeah, and we've seen some things about um, Dun and Bradstreet kind of opening up this partner network in their marketplace. And so um, my question is, even, you know, you have over 2,500 attributes. Again, I think that may be the largest catalog I've heard of. Um, and that's a lot of attributes, but there's got to be, you know, that one in 100 clients that come in asking for something very unique that maybe just isn't part of that catalog. So um, do you have a network of partners that can help supplement data when there is niche cases? Uh, yes. Um, and it's actually one of the areas that we're uh, putting a little bit more emphasis into going forward. Um, and kind of funny because uh, the, uh, the name internally, right, is the DMB Data Exchange, uh, which so sounds similar, right? Um, but again, it's, it's designed to take these unique niche data sets um, and uh, work with that company to get the right DUNS numbers associated with, right? So that those attributes, can, we're making sure it gets onto the right record, um, which, is, which is kind of a critical piece in the process. So um, absolutely, we've got niche, uh, niche data um, that we can work with. And again, reps are the best person to, to speak to about that. Wonderful. So, um, you know, we, we're almost through with the questions. You've been so helpful. And, you know, again, this is prov providing tremendous value um, to the sales and marketing persona who may not have as deep of an understanding about the structure of of these data providers and, and how they're all unique. And, and you're making that very clear today. Um, you know, like I've said many times, like, and it's not my opinion, I've worked with probably 5,000 companies in the last 10 years on, hey, how do I clean my data? And one of the key things they always open up to me about is I'm like, okay, well, you've got to be really honest. If you want to clean your data, you got to be like real, really honest and tell me where you're getting all this data from. Like, is it coming from web forms and list imports and, and manual entry? And is it an ERP or a data lake syncing? And then, and then there's always the question, and well, do you have any data providers also supplementing that information or do you have them enriching the information? And it's a common theme that amongst the, the, the companies that require the, the, most, the, the largest breadth of global information, the best structuring amongst hierarchies and stuff that they, they, they've been, they use DNB and, and it's not, I'm not throwing that as a pitch. I'm saying like, I've asked that question so many times and in the larger, and even in the SMB people that really care about their data, you know, they've got this, this data set, um, especially on that firmographic side. Um, and then recently I've had heard more and more like, companies are using DNB to find contacts as well. And I know that's been something that's always been out there, but can you tell us a little bit about the profile, the contacts in the Dun & Bradstreet database? Like you're probably not gonna be able to find, you know, a marketing analyst in there. And maybe I'm wrong, you know, I mean, you can explain that, but uh, I know I can find the CEO at every business, right? So can you give us a little bit about the profile, the contacts you're, you're helping companies to source? A absolutely. So um, from a DMB perspective, right, again, the traditional was on the risk side of the house, right, you needed to know uh, who the owners were, right? So got that. Uh, you also needed to know on, on a corporate level uh, who the officers of the company were, right, who's making the decisions. Um, so that level of content, right, is, is the starting point. Um, where we've grown considerably, right, is... Um, downward, right, throughout the organization. So a marketing analyst could absolutely be within the Dun & Bradstreet contact universe. Um, and again, uh, one of the things that uh, your reps can help help with, right, is when, you, when you're looking for specific uh, titles, specific code, uh, you know, like uh, this, I need this level of person in the technical side of the house, right? Um, these are the things that, again, we can go in from a database perspective and identify, yes, we have 30,000 of those, right? Or we have 15,000 or, or 800,000, right? Um, so uh, our, our, our process for contacts, right, is to ingest them in, uh, get them associated to the right company, right? And then also from a standardization process, make sure we've got the 
um, what we call a management responsibility code, uh, which will basically tell you what level of the organization are they at, what their job functions are, right? And uh, allow you to do that type of uh, a search, right, within the database. It's pretty amazing. Um, do you have any COVID-related data points that could be helpful to users? Uh, absolutely. And, and again, this, this gets back to um, DMB's kind of background and, and kind of core business, right, which is uh, helping customers assess risk. Um, so when the pandemic uh, first started, right, our uh, analytics team jumped on it and have been on it ever since, right? So there's, there's actually a COVID index uh, that DMB generates for a company. Um, and it, again, it, it crosses over from the risk side of the house where I'm, I'm a, you know, a finance guy who wants to just see if, you know, my companies are, are going downhill and not going to be able to pay me. But, you know, you look at the sales side of it, right? It's number one, am I prospecting to a bunch of companies that aren't going to be there, right? In another six to eight months, just based on the, the nature of the pandemic. Um, and, and also from a retention standpoint, right? It's not only just prospecting, but, you know, what's going to be the impact of the, this virus on, you know, my book of business over the next 12 months? Um, because if, if I'm losing 10% of it, right, I'm going to have to find that somewhere else. So um, yeah, Dun & Bradstreet is, uh, we do have offerings in that area. Um, and again, it's, it's one of the things that differentiates us in the marketing space. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, I do a lot of speaking again on that ideal customer profile and you know, managing pipeline. And, and, and I think that that's a, a brilliant way to look at it. It's like, am I targeting the right companies? Part of that is, that, are they gonna be around or are they gonna be able to pay, right? Number two is, um, you know, is my renewal pipeline going to close? And again, having that risk analysis will definitely help to identify where there's risk and, you know, allow you to maximize resources on the other companies that may be less risk averse on, on the customer uh, pipeline. So, you know, that's vital information. You know, not many um, companies out there are using it today. And I think that, you know, if you want to turn the needle quickly, especially now, um, that is a good data point to start to look into. Um, do you guys offer any other services outside of providing data? I know the answer is yes, but maybe you can dive into some of the, the more relative services to the sales and marketing side of the house. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, again, starting with the um, the profiling, right? Uh, Donna Brassi's got a solution, uh, actually a couple in market right now. One is uh, Data Vision, um, which is our cloud-based solution and tied into our Hoover's uh, solution as well. Uh, there's also an advanced analytics solution uh, called Market Insight um, that again, allows you to do a lot more uh, different variables, right? In the slicing and dicing. Um, and then once you've got the analytics done, right, now you're moving into the act of, you know, the uh, identify the right companies, right, that you want to go after. Um, so there's digital assets in terms of uh, cookie data, right, that we can uh, provide, right, that's very specific to um, the firmographic profiles, right, that, you, you know, the analytics come up with. Um, then there's also our uh, activation platform lattice, right, our, our CDP uh, that allows customers to um, actually go take that digital asset, right, and, and actually activate it in marketing campaigns. So uh, we've also got the intent data, right, um, that allows uh, customers, and, and these, the, the big differentiator on the DNB intent data, right, is that it's, um, it's, it's built on a customer by customer basis, right? So you provide the keywords, DNB builds the uh, intent model, and then can deliver it again, either through uh, our, our CDP platform or um, through um, Data Vision or Hoover's, right? Um, then you move into the uh, actual uh, sales acceleration, right? Uh, which is the Hoover's aspect of it. So providing all the sales teams uh, the information that they need, right? That's critical for closing deals as quickly as possible um, and tracking uh, things like, you know, news related things on, on companies and contacts and things of that nature, right? So um, that from, from kind of a solution perspective kind of is a, uh, an end-to-end -end, um, solution 
um, piece. Uh, and then there's also uh, the, the solutions uh, specific to just the enrichment, right? So we've talked a lot about that. Um, there's a, a solution that was just launched, DMB Connect, uh, which is kind of our next generation uh, match and rich platform. Um, but within uh, things like the Salesforce ecosystem, right? Um, our optimizer for Salesforce um, or our optimizer product suite, right? Is, is best in class in terms of just making sure that customers can get the clean data where they need it, right? At, and it stays clean over time. Um, that's one of the things that, again, that from d &B's perspective, right, uh, we're tracking, uh, we've got like over 5 million updates a day to the database, right? So, um, and these things need to get to the reps, right, um, in a timely fashion, right? Getting that information six months later just doesn't help you. Um, so those are the, those are the key uh, solution sets, I think, that d is offering up to customers today uh, in the sales and marketing space. And I'm sure one of the product guys will, will yell at me because I left theirs out, but um, <laughs> at, at a high level, <laughs> so that, that um, sums it up. If somebody is interested in um, getting API access from Dun and Bradstreet for, you know, doing enrichment or, uh, you know, website visitor intelligence or, um, you know, type ahead on a form, you know, what's the best way to go about getting that access? Well, if you're a Salesforce customer, you know, you work with Ringlead and you work with our DMB sales rep and, and away you go because um, you guys have done a great job of integrating that, that piece of it in uh, for us. Um, but the, the, the absolute best thing to do, right, uh, is dnb.com. Um, you can actually look through partners there, right, and understand if there's partners that are delivering what you need where you need it uh, or um, you know, basically just a more information, right? If I need more information on visitor intelligence, right? That's one of the things you can plug in. Uh, and in effect, uh, a rep will contact you and, and give you all the details that you need. There's also a lot of good information on the dmb.com site, um, which has uh, continually been getting a facelift like uh, over the past year. So it, it's getting better and better and easier and easier uh, for customers to use and find what they need on there. Yeah, I found your your API documentation is very very strong, um, and and every uh, you know researching information on you know the product and the line everything is is strong as well. So I second that opinion, but also the API documentation is very very strong. Um, lastly, can you explain your vision of of the Ringlead and DNB integration? Uh, well, again, to me, the integration is a critical part in customers getting the, the lead to the person that can have the best chance of moving it forward and closing it right as quickly as possible. Um, again, you guys have done a great job. You are the masters at uh, lead routing. Uh, so again, getting that information, the firmographic data, the hierarchy data uh, onto a lead right, as quickly as possible allows you then to, to you know, leverage your platform, leverage uh, our integration with Optimizer for Salesforce, right, so you've got DUNS already on there. If the DUNS comes in on, on your side, right, now you got a real easy one-to-one -one routing. Um, and even from a hierarchy perspective, again, right, if, if there's no account there for that particular business, um, but there is one for its parent company, its headquarter company, right, um, perfect way to get it to the person who can close it quickest. Um, that and, and adding in the firmographic piece, right? Again, so if there is no relationship right now, um, you got the firmographic so that you can verticalize it if you need to, right? Get it to the right vertical rep. Um, also do a quick assessment of how big is this opportunity, right? Is this a, you know, a five person company or is it a 500,000 person company, right? Um, and, you know, you, you want to make sure it's, it's dropped to the right rep at the right, you know, as quickly as possible so that you guys can, you know, close on it fast. That's great. Yeah, I've, I've found that, you know, Dun & Bradstreet's obviously got this amazing data, but they've also got these amazing complimentary services like helping identify profiles to do better targeting so that more leads end up coming in through the inbound channels for a company like Ringlead to process and organize with that integration. 
um, but also, you know, other things like helping understand what attributes are important. You know, all the services that you mentioned earlier is you know, when we bring a client to you who's needing data, um, there's a lot more that comes with that in, in terms of, okay, understanding how they're going to use the data, what they're going to use it for, you know, how it's going to be used in scoring and uh, architecting hierarchies. And so, you know, the match between the two, it seems to play very, very nicely. Um, and, um, you know, we are very thrilled to have you on this afternoon, Jay. You've been more than kind with your time. You've spent almost a full hour with us. And, um, you know, we really appreciate it. And, and I'm, I'm sure the listeners will as well. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. And again, looking forward to a great partnership together. Wonderful. We are too. Have a wonderful day. All right. You too.